What's up, Vape Fam? Today, we're taking a look at the Norris 30. The 30mm th version of the Norris RDA is quite a bit different than the 22mm version. Uh, a lot has to do with the deck, the terminals, the posts. Uh, so I'm going to show you that now as we go up close for the breakdown to see what makes a vape. Here we are up close with the Norris 30. This is the packaging it comes in, and yes, it does say now with extra chuckness. So there you go. In the back, a little description. Opening up the box, you're going to see that it does not have an adjustable airflow system per se, it does have interchangeable barrels. So you have small hole ventilation barrel, your vertical slotted barrel, and your horizontal slotted barrel. We're going to set this aside for a second. It does come with two different caps. As far as I can tell, the only real difference is the color. It doesn't make any bit of performance difference. And you've got your bag of goodies. Now, in this bag of goodies, there's a lot of little stuff in here. Uh, you've got these flat-headed screws right here. This is important for when you're converting the deck over, and I'll show you that in a second. Extra insulator, O-rings, extra clamps, uh, and the little blue screwdriver. I recommend you don't use the little blue screwdriver for changing the deck around, but I'll show you that in a second as well. <clears throat> Just want to focus for some reason. There we go. So looking at the RDA itself, got the serial number and the logo for 666 on the bottom. Pop the cap off. Again, these are pretty much identical with the exception of the color. Uh, let's push this deck out of here. It's another one where it seals really, really tight on the, uh, the barrel seals really tight on the deck. There's a better look at the other, the third barrel. And then you have the deck. Now it does have a protruding 510 pin, which is nice. Uh, and it does have these clamp style terminals, as you see. But it does change to a postless deck. Now the 30 millimeter is different than the 22 millimeter. And I want you to keep that in mind. Uh, let me grab a screwdriver out of here. If you want to change the deck over, I highly recommend you just use a two and a half millimeter flathead screwdriver because it fits these slots on the screws much much better. That blue one, there's a lot of extra wiggle room in there, and when it gets to the the screws down here in the terminal, you're going to risk uh, stripping them out. So use a two and a half millimeter flathead screwdriver. Um, the 22 millimeter has a completely different setup here. So the way it works is rather than having a screw down inside this terminal you have like a hex screw on the bottom so you have to grab a pair of pliers or something and untwist that to remove it from the deck itself uh, this one removing this removes the clamp so normally with this deck you just pull that up put your wire under there, trap the leads underneath of it, so on and so forth, just like on a goon or on the shuriken. But if you remove these, down inside these holes are two little screw, uh, screw in each hole. Put your screwdriver down in there. Again, this part is what is different on the 22 millimeter. And then you just wiggle it out. As you can see, it's got these two little pronged feet on it to fit into these little grooves on the deck. So you pull those out like so. You go into your little bag of goodies. I'm just going to go ahead and dump it out all over the place so I can get to these quicker. And you're going to take these larger flathead screws. You're just going to put them down into this threaded hole. Put 
sort of. Well, okay, hold on. I'm going to start it with my finger. Like that. And now it's technically postless. So now you would just trap your leads underneath this screw and one side is the positive side, well this side is the negative side, this side is the positive side as you can see from the indication here where the center post would be, it comes up and makes connection with this side. And then you would trap your leads under it, move your coils up so that they are not laying across, and then you have a postless deck. Uh, it's really neat, um, I think that there is a little bit of a problem with the fact that this wall around the RDA here is so so high so if you you can't put the the coil in flat and then lay it up you actually have to pre-bend the leads to trap underneath the screws themselves um, I'm going to go ahead and put the post back in so to put these back in again you've got these pronged feet you can see that screw sticking out of the bottom there and you just push it into the hole, like so. And then you screw the screw back into place. Make sure it doesn't move. Do the same on the other side. Oops, like so. And then on your clamps themselves, one side has a chamfer, one side doesn't. Put the chamfer facing up, then your screws will sit flat. I will do one each way, that way you can see the difference. So this side is the correct way. Even this screwdriver is a little bit small, but it fits down into the hole, whereas the three millimeter flathead did not fit down to the hole. So that is the correct way. See, the screw sits flat inside there. I'll put this one in the wrong way, and you'll see that it'll sit up high. So this one has the chamfer facing down. and you can see how it sits on top of it like that. So I'm going to go ahead and put a build in here, uh, work out the hot spots, wick it up. Building on these is really, really straightforward because like I said, all you do is trap the leads under the bottom of the, uh, the clamp and underneath the screw on the postless deck. So there's really no trick to building on this, there's no trick to wicking it up. It's just really, really straightforward, really simple. Um, so I'm just going to put a build in it and we will go back up top and we will talk about it and we will vape on it. Alright guys, that was the up close and breakdown with the Norris 30, the 30 millimeter version. Um, as I mentioned in the breakdown, we'll go over the pros and cons here in a second, but as I mentioned, those posts are very different. The 22 millimeter version has the hex nut with a screw that goes down into it rather than the big clamping style post that you saw. Um, just keep that in mind, if you have the 22 millimeter version, it is different. It's supposed to be different, it doesn't mean anything's wrong with it, it doesn't mean anything's wrong with this one, they're just two completely different designs. Um, so moving on, into the pros and cons. I have one big con with this thing. The airflow is not adjustable. That's my only real big drawback with it. Um, it took some messing around with it to figure out where I really enjoyed the airflow at. Uh, and what I ended up doing was I took the two slot barrel, that one there, and I flipped it upside down. And by flipping it upside down, the bottom slot actually gets cut off by the deck. So it turns into one slot. And that's about the airflow I like. The O-rings are a little tight too, but once it gets a little bit of juice on it, it slides over, no problem. But yeah, it works with all the barrels, if you flip it over upside down, it blocks some of the airflow off in all three of them. You've got the, the one with all the holes in it, and you've got the one with the three vertical slots. Flipping upside down will block part of it off, so if you need it a little bit tighter, uh, if you wanted to run 
a slightly bigger airflow barrel on it, flip it upside down, it tightens up a little bit. Uh, I like this one because it hits all across the coil. Um, and it was just a little too wide open when it was right side up. But that's the sweet spot for me. I do wish it had adjustable airflow, but I mean, there's nothing you can do about it right now. Um, it would have been pretty easy, I think, to just put two little tabs down off this cap so you could spin the cap and cut some off. But other than that, honestly, it performs really, really well. Um, I'm looking forward to doing some builds with the uh, the postless deck, maybe some stovetop coils, something like that. Um, there is a ton of build room in here, even with the clamp style posts. There is a good amount of build room. I threw some fuse claptons in here. Uh, people have accused me of it, but yes, I love my fuse claptons. Uh, I can whip them up pretty quick. I make a lot of them. Um, so I threw some fuse claptons in here. The flavor's been really, really good. Like I said, when the barrel was the right side up, it was just too airy. It kind of killed the flavor a little bit. Flipping it upside down. Uh, really helped a lot with that and because of the way they designed the logo it looks correct either way you run it that N is the same shape one way or the other uh, so it's not a big deal uh, the caps I don't really understand the difference between the caps they're just a different color honestly uh, they even seem to be made out of the same material just one's black one's white uh, I guess just to match up um, maybe they are a different material and they just feel really similar uh, but the the cap itself though is awesome. This radius in here fits nicely. Uh, the chuff is not too big. It fits nicely in your mouth. Really, really nice. But again, the big selling point on this is the fact that you have clamp style terminals or you have a postless deck. Uh, I got this from Fogwind. They retail from Fogwind for 60. Uh, Honestly, I would say it's still probably worth it even without the adjustable airflow control because you do still have six different airflow settings between the three barrels and upside down or right side up. Um, and you can pretty much tailor it that way. The three vertical slots seems to be the tightest. The one with all the holes in it might be tighter, but I think the three vertical slots was the tightest draw, especially once it was flipped upside down. You kill about, I don't know, a third of the airflow out of that. Um, this one is definitely the loosest with the two horizontal slots in it. And right side up, it's almost like breathing. Uh, let's see if I can swap this over real quick. Yeah, there's just almost, there's barely any resistance on your inhale, and it does mute the flavor down a lot. By flipping it the other way around, the flavor comes back out. Um, other than that, I mean, the flavor's good off of it. The Vapors really good off of it. Uh, easy to build because of the size. Again, if you take the post out and you build on a postless, it's a little more complicated because you have to pre bend the legs down so that they fit underneath the screws because of how high that outer rim is on the uh, the deck itself. But all in all, a good performing RDA, reasonable price for it, 60 bucks for a 30 millimeter. Keep that in mind. It is a 30 millimeter. Uh, that seems to be somewhat standard price for a 30 millimeter RDA. Um, and this one has two different deck configurations. So, all in all, I would probably recommend this, especially if you like 30mm RDAs, especially if you like postless decks or clamp style decks, because as far as I know, this is one of the few or only 30mm clamp style or postless decks, for that matter, right now. Um, I'm sure more will be coming out, especially with how popular the Goon was when it came out. Um, so, there you have it. I uh, hope you guys found this video helpful. Uh, like, subscribe. It helps me out. If there's anything I didn't address, anything you want to say, leave it in the comments below. If you liked it, if you hated it, if you tried it, if you didn't try it, if you want one, let us all know. Um, hope to see you guys again soon. Until next time, suck, blow, and keep on vaping.